All right, Rose, I got another uh, video here, another problem. Um, and it's the same setup of, as the last problem. So maybe this will go a little quicker. It says, given sine of alpha is root 2 over 5 and sine of beta equals 1 half, find the tangent of alpha plus beta. Now guess what? Sine of alpha is root 2 over 5. We already did that reference triangle. Um, and sine beta equals 1 half. We already did that reference triangle in the previous video, the previous problem. But we want to use that information to find the tangent of alpha plus beta. That formula is on, in the textbook, it's at the bottom of page 288. But I'm going to read it aloud, okay? The tangent of alpha plus beta is a big fraction. And on the top... It's tan alpha plus tan beta. And on the bottom, it's 1 minus tan alpha times tan beta. And by the way, all of these can be derived. There's, there's proof for these. Man, I could do them, but you know what? When I do some of these in class, people you know, like throw stuff at me because they're, they're tough. I don't know what to tell you. All right, so what we got to do is plug in using my reference triangles. And just a reminder, my alpha triangle has an opposite of root 2 and an adjacent of root 23. So tan alpha is actually root 2 over root 23. Now, I know that doesn't look good. It's not even in simplest form. I'll leave it there, and we'll try to fix it at the end of the problem. Um, tan beta is uh, 1 over, well, it would be 1 over root 3, which I guess we can make root 3 over 3. Okay. And then on the bottom of this fraction, I have 1 minus tan alpha tan beta. So I got 1 minus tan of alpha was root 2 over root 23. And tan beta would be uh, root 3 over 3. And, you know, that's really my answer. But you have to simplify it. And the way you simplify this is to get rid of these, you know, I'm going to read it again to you. The, the, this is a, a, these have fractions within fractions. On the very top, I have root 2 over root 23 plus root 3 over 3. On the bottom, I have 1 minus root 2 over root 23 times root 3 over 3. And, of course, when you have fractions within fractions, you got to multiply top and bottom by the least common denominator of all the fractions. And the least common denominator of all the fractions is 3 root 23. 3 root 23. So i got to multiply top and bottom by that. And, by the way, um, this is where it just gets really ugly. If you didn't think it was ugly yet, it's ugly now. Okay. So when I distribute that 3 root 23 to the numerator, the root 23s cancel, and I get a 3 root 2 plus, and then I get 3 root 23 times root 3 over 3, and the 3s cancel, and I actually get root 23 times root 3, which is root 69. Sorry, I'm having a tough time writing that down. Um, in the denominator of this massive fraction, I get 3 root 23 times 1, which is 3 root 23. And then I get 3 root 23 times root 6 over 3 root 23, which just gives me root 6. Whew. That's hideous. I'll tell you what. In, in, uh, in all honesty, we probably should multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, but I'm going to leave it like this. I'm gonna leave, this answer is so bad, I'm going to leave it just as is. Um, so in the top, you get 3 root 2 plus root 69. On the bottom, you get 3 root 23 minus root 6. Again, I guess if you really wanted to get to simple, you know, Truth be told, I just made this problem up. If you really wanted to get to simple radical form, you'd have to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, and that would be a total, total nightmare. So I'm going to 